Ladies and gentlemen, what's happening? What a special day it is, because guess what? I'm doing a story time that I actually want to do now. This is the journey of the Pickle Rick 240. Oh my God. Pickle Rick's my first drift car. It's the first one I bought when I got into drifting uh, super heavy. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was my favorite car at the time. Still is, really, to be totally honest. Um, but here's the story because I keep getting asked about it every day. Every time I do anything, you don't matter what I'm doing, everybody's like, yo, where's the 240? Where's Pickle Rick? Shut up. Just watch this. Also, I'm pretty bad at like story time stuff. So this is going to be a bunch of parts, but I'm telling you, stick in there. It's going to get pretty crazy. I'm telling you now. Let's go ahead and kick things off. Who's ready? I am. Just a little bit of, of, of the, the prehistory. Now, um... The first time I took my car out to any event or anything like that was uh, Grid Life 2018. And I, it was a great day. I got to drive Von Giddens demo car. I met Von Giddens. I met Chelsea Denofa. Went out there with my homeboy, Danny Neville. Um, yeah, I mean, that, it was just a great day. Everybody was so nice. I, I, I had a crack in one of my wheels. Somebody just came and fixed my wheels. Uh, Nexon Tires was out there. They gave me free tires that day. Um, somebody just handed me a fucking steering wheel out of nowhere. Just, just a, just a steering wheel. Like, hey, put this in your car. I'm, okay, I didn't know the community was so dope, but um, you know, as I got to know people, I understood like where it was going. Blah blah blah. So, <laughs> up walks this gracious young man, George Grove, owner and proprietor of GMG Automotive. My guy. Now, George is a very polite guy. He came up that day while I was at Grid Life getting stuff fixed, and he was like, "Look, man, hey, I'm the drift guy." in Atlanta so if anything else happens to your car or anything happens at all just holler at me I'll fix anything drift related with your car let me know I'm your guy now I'm your new drift car guy whenever you need things fixed absolutely I'm taking the offer sir I'll see you tomorrow now again I don't know if again but I'm pretty bad at story times there's gonna be a lot of parts to this but I'm telling you stick around it's gonna be crazy you're gonna love it but uh yeah so George tells me that, tells me to come holler at him whenever. So I get him started on a couple of few, uh, you know, a few things I already got going on. Uh, the AC in my, in my, uh, in my Impala isn't working right now. Can you, can you hook that up? Uh, we, you know, had some regular mechanical and customer issues with that stuff, but you know, the, the, I'll catch you up on part two and you don't have to like for part two because I'm not an asshole. Just go look for part two and you'll know what's going on. Let's keep going on this journey. I'm so ready for y'all to know all about this. So after a while, fast forward through a, through a pretty cool friendship that George and I have. Uh, after a while, he, he gives me a call and uh, he says, do you want to go drifting? Absolutely, I want to go drifting. Let's, let's go out. So we go to uh, Lake Lanier, which is a, a pretty cool place. Um, it's actually owned by Caffeine and Octane now. So, you know, it's a, it's, it's a very well-known drift track. I'm like, hell yeah, man, let's go. I, 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 at this point, I've actually built my uh, my E46, my BMW that I built from the ground. If you want to see that happen, check out the IG, uh, Nappy Boy Automotive. You can see me build that from the ground. I actually really got into drifting by now. So it's time to, you know, go show off. So we pack up Pickle Rick and the new BMW. I'm going to show off both things. And I had just finished the BMW the day before we were going drifting. Oh man, what a great day it was. It was so good. I take out the uh, I take out the BMW. I'm killing it. I'm doing my thing. I'm actually having a good time. Uh, there comes a point where it starts raining. The rain got the best of me. Uh, a, a car turned around in front of me. I didn't know what to do. I panicked and just hit regular brakes and not my, I didn't try to do anything else. And I end up smashing the front of the new BMW that I had just finished the day before. Now, while I was drifting my BMW, I was so proud that I had finished a drift car. I was just drifting that. And George wanted to drift too. So he took out the Pickle Rick 240 that day. Um, by the time I had smashed the front of my car and by the time I had gotten back and you know, I would have had a secondary drift car by that time pickle rick was already it was it was driven into the ground i never got to drive it that day um i had never taken pickle rick out on the track at all on any drift track that would that would have been my first time drifting it that day and i had already built another car that's that's how long i've had it and still had, had never taken it out on a track um 
but George had kind of driven it into the ground that day. He was driving it really hard and it wasn't doing great. So I couldn't drive Pickle Rick that day and George had to take it back and kind of diagnose it at the shop. Boom, boom, boom. This is where dreams turn into nightmares. George gets Pickle Rick back to the shop and we find out there's metal shards in the oil pan. The, there's water in the oil. There's all these things that wasn't wrong before we went to the track that day. And I know, you know, drifting there's a lot of wear and tear on an engine, but I would have loved to do the wearing and tearing myself. Uh, so this is when things start to get a little choppy with me and George. So obviously George is gonna fix the car, correct? Mm. A lot of time goes by, and being that I have my BMW already, I'm not really paying attention to pick a Rick anymore because it's like building a robot and then it works. Like, you're going to pay attention to that way more than anything else you're doing, right? <sighs> a few months later, George calls me and he says, hey, man, I have an opportunity to be on a TV show. And it's a it's a pretty big TV show. It's on a it's on Discovery or something like that. And he's like, "Look, man, they just want they want to see my my drifting skills. They want they want me to they just want me to drift, man. They, they want me to show off how well I drive, and and that's it, man. They just and and I don't have a drift car right now that's functional. So how about this? I'll fix your car for free if you let me use your car for the TV show. Oh man." You got a chance to be on TV, George, like, and show off drifting, and you're going to do it in my car, and then people know I have a drift car, and you're going to fix my car for free? Absolutely. Let's do that. Um, we got some news. A bit, a good bit of time goes by before I'm like, hey, what, um, what happened to the TV show, man? And also, where's my car? He goes, oh man, I, I lost that TV show on the first on, on the first round. Is that the first round? There's no rounds. You just said they wanted to they wanted to see your drifting skills and they just wanted to see you driving. I'm like, yeah, but it was kind of a competition. There was other drifters there and stuff like that. So I'm like, uh, okay, cool. Second question though, where where's where's my car? So basically, he gave me a whole thing about how you know um, he had to drive it even harder than he did at the at the track so now you know now the motor's all fucked up now the motor is just he thinks it's done it's about time we need a new engine now um and i'm like man i, I didn't know it was that bad I like you know it was driving fine when i was driving it and he drove it for a whole day on the track like how hard did you drive it on the tv show he was like man i didn't really do a lot i just kind of you know i drove it you know they wanted to see me drive so i did my thing like I'm like, well, that makes sense. I'm not really that well versed in drifting, so I'm thinking there's more than what I'm doing, and he must be just doing the normal professional version of what I was supposed to be doing, and that kills your car quicker or something like that. So I'm like, cool, that's that's fine. Now, two new iPhones have come out since this conversation, and now it's time to start pulling out receipts because I only got text messages from this phone that I have now, and ladies and gentlemen, part four is when the juice comes into things. Come to part four for the receipts. This is gonna, this is gonna get... <laughs> Everything up until now was just for context. I needed y'all to know a little bit of the history, so I'm okay with getting it into it, getting into it if y'all ready. Uh, I gotta warn you, again, I'm terrible at story times. This is gonna be a lot. This is gonna be a lot, but I am ready. Who's ready? And I had to put my hair up because it kept doing that weird thing. So let's go. November 16th, 2021. Now this is, uh, at this point, I'm pretty, I'm pretty upset with George. Like I, I'm, we're not really like friends like that. I'm not really responding to him a bunch. And, uh, this is also the day after I posted, um, when I got my, my new Rolls Royce truck and my Lambo at the same time, uh, after the whole stunt with the T-Pain gets his Rolls Royce, uh, repoed and shit like that. So it was, it was pretty funny, but George isn't super dope at keeping secrets because he likes telling everybody, everybody business. And, uh, he's like, why you didn't tell me? I said, I wanted to keep a secret and you know, and you're not dope at keeping secrets. And he starts to get the sense that, uh, this guy might not like me as much as I thought. Immediately afterwards, he sends me uh, this picture and he says, I get to drive this for the rest of the week. Now, saying that, 
is saying that he's driving one of his customer's cars and his customer doesn't need it for a week. So he's again taking a car that belongs to his customer, taking it out and just showing, I have no idea how he's driving this car, if he's driving it hard or doing his thing. But also in that same day, all in the, this is all happening in the same day. He says, I just bought a Mercedes. I said, congratulations, brother, one time. Now, I could be just telling y'all this story, but I just want y'all to know that this, this stuff is real. All this stuff is available. This is still in my phone. So I'm just showing you because I don't want you to think that, oh, you're just saying that because you thought you were going to get treated better, blah, blah, blah. Nah, this is, this is this. He bought a Mercedes, right? Cool. So he was trying to say like it wasn't a special car. And I'm like, dude, that's this is your first big step. Like this is your first time financing a car. You build that credit up. And, you know, he said that's the plan. Interest rate is a little higher than blah, blah, blah. Yeah, build your credit, man. Get your business together. This whole time, I don't have my car back yet. So we fast forward all the way to February 8th of the next year. And I still don't have my car because he said some body damage happened. And I'm like, you know what? Since some body damage happened, I'm going to get a boss kit for the car. And it's going to be a big reveal. It's going to be great. So... All this time has passed, and I say, just got to, just pay for the boss kid. He says, great, I got to redo the motor. This is after he said he already changed out the motor, and it was running great, and he was almost ready to bring me back my car. Now he says he has to redo the motor again because the new one died? Must have got damaged on the TV show. No, you said you already changed it. Hold on now. Hold on. Wait a minute. You already changed the motor, and now the new one died on the TV show that the first one died on? Come back for part five so now there's a uh, the new engine that died but the but it's also the old engine and then the new one that he put in there also broke because from when the first one broke on the tv show so whatever cool uh, you know what nothing i can do about that you're the mechanic you know what you're talking about uh march 10th march 10th the next month i got the body kit it's delivered to my house ready to get picked up and put on the car where, where you at? Blah, blah, blah. Finally come and get him, to, get him to come pick it up on March 13th. I think that was the day. Jesus Christ. All right. March 19th. I'm dropping this Ferrari off this afternoon. He's just now dropping the other person's Ferrari off. He's, you know, he's still in uh, this, this other guy's Ferrari. I don't give a fuck about that. I don't, I'm upset. I want my car. How's the engine coming on March 24th? Good. The, the block is at the machine shop. Fantastic. Let's get this thing going. He's gonna start on the body kit next Wednesday. He's been backed up because he's been doing so many, so many cars. So many cars. Maybe the most cars ever. I say, cool, I got a pretty big opportunity coming up and I wanna get Rick right before I move on it. Um, and then he goes on about wanting to get a new motor and I'm like, how much, man? What engine are you trying to put in it? Then an LS3 and he says, I gotta put 2K towards an engine that I didn't break. I gotta put 2K towards a new engine and I ain't even get to drive or try out the old one. So now I'm two thousand more dollars in the hole because that's how much it would have cost him to fix the old one if he had ever fixed it. Which now I'm realizing he never fixed it. So now I'm just trying to get all the information I need because at this point I just want my car back. I don't care what happens. Just get what it's gonna take for you to get me my car back. Cool. He sends me all the information. Cool. I, all together, two K before he blah blah blah. He said it's gonna take three to four weeks. And that depends on if I'm wrapping it, because if I want to make it look pretty when it come back, it's going to take a lot longer. March 27th, I hit him back up three days later to see, hey, you talked to anybody about that engine? Nope, it's Sunday. They're only Monday to Friday, my guy. I'll call you tomorrow. Cool, it's Sunday. Let's, let's wait till tomorrow then. April 8th. Yo, what's up? Been slammed getting cars out, still waiting on the block to get done. They have been working on it. Have they, though? Have they, though? Then he comes to my house with some other arbitrary ass shit that I didn't ask him to do. We start talking about some other shit. Uh, guys, it's May now. It's May. And before this, he says, do you need any car work on anything? Nigga, you got a whole car of mine. D yes, I need that car fixed. I want to have that car back. Do I need any? Yes. Guys, we got to stay. Oh, my God. We got Come back for the next part. Good shit. Part six, I think. <sighs> so yeah, still really no update on what's going on with the car. I, ju I just don't know. It's May now. We started this set of text. We started this set of text in November of the year before. It's May now. 
So I was trying to get Pickle Rick done by the time I came around to doing uh, some real special shit, man. Some real special shit. I had my, my Wisconsin Fest and I wanted to take Pickle Rick drifting in June so I can, you know, so I can show off the shit because there was a drift event before my festival and it was real special to me. So I said, it's not going to be done by June, is it? Now, I'm like, you know what? Never mind. I'll just take my Mustang because RTR, shout out to Vaughn and team. RTR vehicles hooked me up with my new Mustang and they did that shit in a month. They did it in one month. They took a stock car and made it an RTR video in a, in a, a RTR vehicle in a month. I'm fucking mad just rethinking about this shit. He said it would be ready is, is what he's saying. Now, this is him saying that it's going to be ready in June. Okay. Uh, but, you know. Yeah, to be safe, just take the Mustang. You know, the bearings have been on back order for months. It's been waiting on parts, of course. Everything everything is on back order for all cars, except for the cars he's working on. Because he's been backed up with builds, remember? And he said he's been, he's been doing so much shit to all these cars, but everybody else is having problems getting parts. He's the only person that's killing all these cars. Ferraris, fucking GTRs, all this shit. Everybody's backed up on parts, except for George. Because he's pumping cars out of there. But with my car, everything's backed up. Everybody's backed up. So he's asking me to come out to this event. And I'm like, man, I, I, that's two events in a row. That's, that's pretty tough for me with my schedule. I'm like, Caffeine and Octane is asking if I'll come to their shit. And then Vaughn is asking if I'll come to FD. I'm honestly confused. I don't know which one to do. Because if I go to both, I'm going to be tired of shit when I got to do the shit that's not, you know, drift related and shit like that. So he gives his whole opinion on that. But... I'm petty, so there you go. So he hits me randomly. Uh, I said, you know, I'm on tour at this point. Uh, I said, I just got off stage. I'm on tour. And he tries to FaceTime me to show me just how good his girlfriend is getting at rapping cars. Uh, cool. Thanks. She's doing great, bro. More power. May 21st. Bro, what? Got good news. I got a motor for, uh, for, for I got a motor worked out for Rick. I'm leaving Formula Drift Orlando right now, driving up, blah, blah, blah. See you tonight. Cool. Yes. We're moving. It's May 23rd, though. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm frustrated, but we're going to keep this train moving. Here we go. Come back. Come back for the next part. We got it. Here we go. Part seven. Honestly, didn't think it was going to be this many parts, but there's a lot more. So there's a couple things you got to remember. Now, uh, remember he bought that Mercedes? And trying to build up his credit and stuff. You got to remember that because it comes back up. You also got to remember Tiffany because that's his girlfriend. And she comes back up later as well. Here we go. So basically, I'm telling him my event is in Milwaukee on June 11th. That's when I need the car by. If you're saying it's going to be fixed, then fuck, let's do it. Um, Yeah. Uh, shout out to iTrack out there in Milwaukee, man. Y'all did y'all thing. Uh, he said, just keep the Mustang ready in case we don't make it. But I'm going to try to make my absolute. I'm going to try my absolute artist to do that. Boom! And Tiffany doesn't know what to do and all that stuff. But anyway, okay, anyways. But he's saying it's gonna be ready by the time for the event. June eleventh in Milwaukee. Pickle Rick's gonna be done. And now he's saying Tiffany doesn't know what to charge me to wrap the shit. And I'm like, whatever you charge everybody else, you have prices. She's getting good at wrapping cars. She does this, right? She has the prices. Cool. Whatever she charges everybody else, bro. Cool. Twenty five hundred, let's do it. Just hurry up and do it. And he starts sending me stuff to like imply that he's working on it and he's like getting it done. And he says, uh, do you know how much the rear fenders uh, stick out? And in my head, I'm like, you have the kit and the car with you right now. I don't, why would I know any of this? Uh, did you get it from Cora Osprey? Nope, I got it from Hurt Life. Uh, I'll call him and ask him, you have the kit. Why don't you like just put it, put that part on the car. You know, then he goes, hey, you don't know Rick Ross, do you? And I'm like, yeah, obviously no Rick Ross. <laughs> He's looking for someone to help him do an LS swap on one of his old schools. Can you hook me up with him? Would really appreciate that. Uh, you know what? I'm not an asshole. I'm not a piece of shit, so I can try. He's pretty quick with car stuff, so you may already be too late. Then he says, what's your plan? What's my plan for what? What are you going to tell him? You're going to tell him about me that I do your stuff? Just going to ask him if I can get the shit done already. And if not, then I got a guy that wants to do it. There's no plan. What the hell? Also, with how long you're taking with my shit, I'm not, I shouldn't be recommending you to anybody, much less my fucking famous friends. I shouldn't be doing shit for you right now until I get my car back and I can vouch for your work. Because up until now, 
It's shit. It's the worst. Then he hits me with the biggest, craziest thing. Okay, just let me know what he says. I really appreciate it. If he's interested, I can put I can put him together something pretty quick. No, you can't. No, you can't. I'm. You're literally telling the guy that you're taking forever to do my shit, and you think I'm about to tell Rick Ross you can do something pretty quick for him? No, you can't. You can. No, I know you can. I'm not about to lie to Rick Ross. What is wrong with you? I gotta go upstairs and take my, take my blood pressure medicine. I'm gonna be, be right back. Come back for the next part, please. I'll be right back. Oh my God. Jesus. So now I'm trying to call him. I'm, I'm getting a little more aggressive because I'm kind of tired of not having my car. And uh, now he's not answering my calls because he's at dinner. So excuse the fuck out of me. It's not like you have one of my cars or anything like that. You're, you you got to eat. You know what I'm saying? And he says, uh, I got a new cam ordered also. You partnered with an LS performance company. <laughs> on parts and future stuff they will offer big discounts i don't fucking remember saying you can tell people that we're partnered or they can give me free shit because that means i have to do something for that free shit nothing's free we all know this so don't what the fuck did you just sign me up for but still shout out to brian Tooley and them so because i'd still haven't talked to anybody over there so if y'all need to get in contact with me fucking don't call george because if you want to talk to me for real then don't go through him because you'll never get to it so I'll be in contact with y'all soon. Then when he does have time to talk, he says, hey, I'm in the shop for the next three or four minutes. And that's all the time you got. I've been waiting since November of last year. Well, I've been waiting since 2018, but really got back into it kind of recently. If we want to call this recently in the grand scheme of things. Then finally, he starts sending me pictures on the 27th. Most of the front is marked up on the 27th. This is how far we've gotten. Look at this. Look at how far we've gotten. Not a lot. Still no engine in the car. He said it was at the machine shop a long time ago. Still not in the car. Engine bay red as a motherfucker. Everything is just like, what's going on, man? Then he kept trying to get me to say how dope the car looks and all that shit. And he's like, yo, did you see the pictures I seen earlier? I'm like, yo, I, pr I replied. It looks, it looks amazing. It's going to be a motherfucker to rap. Well, you said Tiffany was getting good at rapping. So, you know, should have the rap. By Tuesday or Wednesday. Then Wednesday comes around. Guess what? He's got the wrap. It's ready to start getting wrapped. Guys, we got 11 days to get this motherfucking car ready. We got 11 days and I can have it at the, I can have it at my event. But it's going to be cutting it close. You know, you won't have the rest of the engine parts until Monday. Then assembly, then tune. Then we got to finish the wrap. So it's going to be tough. I'm like, take your time. I told him we weren't going to make it. I'm just going to take the Mustang anyway. So if you can do it then get it done by the 11th but if not then just relax bro i, I already kind of know it's not gonna be done so at this point i'm just not even crying over it he then sends me pictures of his new r8 he's got a new car guys brand new r8 wouldn't you know it there's only a few things we got time for in this life and definitely one of them is not fixing my fucking car new r8 so uh Things are getting too spicy for the pepper. Come back for the next part. We'll keep this going. It's a lot. I keep telling y'all it's a lot. Part nine, Jesus Christ. So he's telling me about all the shit he's done to his new R8. Um, he's finally got his dream car, guys. I'm so happy for him. I'm so happy. Yeah. Um It's June 20th. It's June. 20th. How's Rick looking over there? The motor is almost done. Or or is it? You know how I know it's not done? Because now you didn't even notice, but it's July 20th now. Huh? Skipped a skipped a whole month. And now how's Rick looking? Oh, it's a lot better. It's on the frame machine now. What happened to what happened to a month ago when it was about to be ready? She would have it back to finish installing the kit Friday. Bro, it's been a month and change since you showed me pictures of the front of the whole shit on the, the body kit. And now it's a month and change later. And you're saying now you can get it back and finish doing the thing you sent me a picture of a month and change ago. Then she can finish the wrapping, right? Tiffany's getting so good at wrapping, she's going to finish the wrap right after that. The quarter panel is pretty bad. 
So I'm taking a little bit longer to fix it and pull the frame. Here's a bombshell, guys. I say, yep, those were some pretty big hits. Let me tell you why that's a bombshell. Up until this point, he's been trying to keep away the clips from that TV show that he took my car on. So up until this point, he has no knowledge that I've seen the clips of the shit. He he, did, he doesn't think I'm watching TV. Oh, t Payne doesn't watch TV. Um, guys, I watch I watch TV, especially when every day I'm doing something. I got people asking me where my car is, what's going on, and then people are also on Twitter like, "Why'd you let George Grove do your car like that?" Who, what, like, what possessed you to let George do your car like this? And why'd you do this? Why'd you let him take your car on this show? And I'm like, probably just driving it hard. So I kind of avoided it for a while. But I finally went and looked it up. So he says, yeah. Did you see the car? Uh, yeah, I fucking saw the car. He says, uh, the guy on the show wrecked me bad. Fucked me up. I said, yeah, he hit the shit out of you. If that wall wasn't there. I'll get to that part. On, I'll get to that part. Uh, it would have been fine. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you finally saw the show? So right there, it tells you he doesn't think I saw the show this entire time. So he's just trying to get me to just accept whatever he's telling me about the car. I know what's wrong with the car finally now. Long time ago, and he's trying to come back to the next part so I can show you the show. The video I was never supposed to see. George, you know the deal. Two pursuers, two exits. If you get away, you keep the two grand. Right on, baby. Two right out to hurt your buddy's car. Two grand. Let's do this. Ready? Two grand for I'm this. If he would have won. Let's see that booty dance. We're going to go for a little ride. I'm gonna level with you guys. Um, it's a whole nother day. You know why? Um, I stopped. I stopped making the videos because I was once I got to part 10, I was like, this is taking up a lot of my time, and I really don't this shit don't even deserve this amount of time from me. I, I, I'd rather I'd just leave it alone. You know what I'm saying? Like, why? 
until I got this text from my dog Hurt Life, which is a great friend of mine and, you know, one of the best drifters I know, just one of the best, you know, people in the in the automotive space as a whole. So, you know, I trust his word. And he says, so my dude at Injuku Racing is saying, George is name dropping you to try and get a sponsorship. And now I got to finish these videos. And now I got to, I got to, now we need to know what's happening. So... Now, mind you, I have my car now. And at the end of this story time, you're going to see what all of this led to. And I'm going to show you the car. And I'm going to show you what all this led to and how this all pretty much ended. Uh, but the fact that he's calling people and putting my name in like like he like he runs with me or he's a partner of mine or some shit like that. I got to tell you guys, at the end of this shit, you're going to be like, what the fuck? Why would he call anybody? Why would he tell anybody at all that he's associated with? I, I just want y'all to know that. So here's part 10 and a half. Or like, I'm, I'm uh, at this point, numbers is, is just pissing me off now. So at this point, he knows that I actually know what's wrong with the car now. And it's not just, uh, you know, the motor or he drove it weird or some shit like that. He knows that I know he crashed my fucking car and that TV show crashed my fucking car on purpose. He knows that I know that now. So now now he's confessing everything. Yeah, he was driving more aggressive with me than anyone on that. You're in the first round. You have no way of knowing that. That was the first round. So uh, the production team I, I, and I bitched out the driver of that patrol. You, they told him to do that. Once they find out it was T Pain's car, they told him to do that. Oh my God! You know the kind of fucking publicity we'll get if we crash T Pain's car. Oh my God! The ratings. Everybody's gonna be watching this shit to see T Pain's car, his first drift car, get crashed. Of course, they told him to do that. They didn't bitch him out. They probably cussed at him in front of you and was like, yo, that was fucking great. You did a good job. You did a good job. Like, yeah, come on, man. We're not fucking stupid. I know how TV production works. That shit is great for them. They love that kind of shit. And then it, I, th I honestly think something's mentally wrong with George because even after all that, this motherfucker asked, do I want to come to his birthday dinner? No. No. Why? After you, you, now you know, I know that you crashed my shit. All right, come back, guys. Uh, we, we back on it now. Welcome to Party 11, guys. We are in fucking... <laughs> it is July 30th. July 30th. You, you, you gotta know how this feels by now. I'm fucking frustrated. Bro, how's Rick coming along? I'm not even showing my frustration because you know what? I don't know what this guy's going through. I know what I'm fucking going through. Uh, you know, the, the guy that was apparently working on the frame got covid so he stopped working on it uh but he still can pick it up on tuesday i don't know how the, i like you know what i'm saying guys like come on man it, it, the motor is done and ready to be installed the rear fender installs and finished wrap it is what and that's just a quick honest fucking question realistically how much longer man i'm dying over here I know, not sure, to be honest, never had so many issues with getting the car together. You sure? You, are you fucking sure, though? We're close. We were close a, a year and a half ago. You said we were close a year and a half ago. What's happening, dude? I would say two weeks. Two weeks from July 30th. Two weeks from July 30th. Let's go ahead and do that math now. I would say two weeks to be safe. Just to be safe, which means he's going to get it done quicker, but just to be safe, maybe even sooner. Jesus Christ, man. Y'all notice my favorite thing. Uh, it's a lot of work. Frame shop, dude, got COVID for a week, so we lost a week. It's supposed to be back last week. Then, then he takes the the, the I care about you uh, <laughs> route. Sure. I'm not rushing because it's not worth it to half-ass this motor and the body kit to rush. It's just not worth it. I said, dude, it's been a year not since I started working on it. <laughs> yeah. You it's been it's been more than a year since you started working on it. You haven't been working on it at all. And I said it's been a year since I've seen it in one piece. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. You're sh yeah, you're sure because you're the one who's been taking Oh my god. Mm. I'm tired of looking at it. That's how long he's had it. Now he's tired of looking at it because he's had it for so long. 
I want to get it done and run it. The body kit is a huge job, same as the motor and the wrap. Not asking you to be patient. Just let me take my time and do it 100% so nothing is rushed or half-assed. But now, I want you to remember all this. He needs the time so nothing is rushed and half-assed. And everything needs to be 100% done. I need you to remember this part. That nothing should be half-assed. The half-assed through this whole thing. And he needs more time so he can make sure everything's 100%. Oh my fucking God. Please remember this part. I'm... We'll be back, right right back. We're gonna part 12, guys. So George is asking me to be patient. Well, he's saying he's not asking me to be patient. Just let him take his time because he needs to make sure everything is 100% done. And, it's, and he's promising me that this thing is not leaving the lift until it's done. It's not leaving the lift. And, you know, same day, he just sending me just random fucking shit to laugh at. I'm not laughing with you, bro. I'm not laughing with you, bro. Don't send me shit. Don't send me a motherfucking thing. So obviously I didn't go to his fucking party. And uh, it was like the party was wild. I'm like, yeah, was, yeah, sure. I landed and went home. Um, and he had 30 supercars at his party. Now, there's at least 30 people that fucking trust this man. Because they, I'm going to guess they don't fucking know what he's been doing to his fucking customers. Or at least to me. I'm just going to say me. I don't know what else he's doing. I'm just saying, this is my fucking experience. It's August 14th. We're getting close. We're getting close. Um, August 14th, he says, I'm actually driving by your road, but figured you didn't want to see it torn apart. Gonna have car tuning by Friday. That's our goal. Then wrap and body should be after that. <sighs> At this point, I'm back to driving my BMW. Remember, it's, it, you know, we're, we're back to driving the BMW now because I, I lost faith that I'll ever see my drift car again. I said, man, do you have an alignment? Uh, spot I can use BMW just drove the BMW for the first time in a while so uh, and I thought the wheel was gonna fly off because the uh unbeknownst to me the um the weights on my rims flew off and it was just it was just misaligned so I need an alignment right guess who does alignments now <laughs> guess guess who doesn't <laughs> now this is a this is a yeah, this is a thing that he does a lot. He shits on everybody. He, he even shitted on my friends at, at Auto Extremes. He shitted on everybody that does cars. He shits on everybody because he thinks he's the best motherfucking mechanic to ever live. And I don't, he, he, he very well may be. I'm never going to know that. I can tell you that right now. I do alignments. Other than that, I don't recommend anyone. That's why I bought one. Everyone sucks. What about the conglomerates that have built their whole shit on alignments. Like, you know, tire shops and shit. <laughs> what the fuck? Body work should be done by Friday. Got a guy that's doing it at the shop. Motor is done. Now, the body work is still getting done. This is so far into, into August now. It's just like, come on, man. Okay, just bought two new lifts. You bought two new lifts for your shop and my shit still ain't done? What is going on? I'm so, I, I hate that these things are this short. And it's, I know it's not short, but it's short. Just come back for the next one. Just come back. Just come back. Two things I want to address before we keep going. Uh, it's part 13. Um, God, I, I know I fully, at this point, I fully know I'm stupid as shit for trusting this man with anything. I know it. I, 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 like, I understand. But he still has my car. So what do you want me to do? Secondly, uh, I keep fucking with my nose because... I, I, I know y'all think I'm on coke or something, but I trimmed my nose hairs like a couple, a couple or a few days ago, and they're growing back, and it's kicking my ass, and it's, it sucks. So let's keep going. So dude says the body work is continuing from when he said he was already doing it, and once the body work is done, Tip can finish the wrap, and we can do all the body kit at the same time. Blah blah blah. I can grab the BMW tomorrow. When do you need it back? Now the BMW. It's running fine. It's just the weights on the rims have fallen off, so it's, it's shaking. It's shaking like a motherfucker at like 60 or 65, like most cars do with aftermarket wheels and shit. So he's saying that uh, his tech can tow my BMW to his shit. Is 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 Halden? He works for him. Blah blah. I met him. Blah blah blah. Cool 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 cool. Perfect. Come pick it up, bro. I got you. Then he says, no problem. You know I do my best to keep you happy, even though the Rick situation sucks for you. I'm just running low on money, 
and it's been hard to only focus on it since it's costing me money. You bought two cars, you got two new lifts in your in your garage now, and you're low on money, so you just haven't been paying attention to my car at all. That's why you haven't been paying attention to my car, because you've been buying all this other shit, and you've been showing it off to me. You want me to sympathize with you saying that you're low on money. And my car that you crashed, that you wrecked, is costing you money. You want me to sympathize with you on that? Come on, man. So again, we're doing the best we can while trying to stay in business. Is there any way I can get half of the motor that we're going to split that would help a lot? It was 4,200 and we agreed to split it since it was a zero mile crate motor. The 2K for the motor would be amazing, but totally up to you. You want me to send you money for something you haven't done. You want me to send you money for a car you haven't fixed. You want me to give you money for a motor that's not even in my car yet. That you fucking crashed. And you're the reason that the motor is like it. You're the reason we had to get another motor. And you want me to give you money for this. I say, you know what? Add it to the BMW alignment invoice. And then, then we'll see what happens. Finish one car. Finish anything that I've asked you to finish. And then I'll think about paying you for it. How about that? Don't worry about nothing else. Don't wrap my shit for free. Don't do nothing. Don't let Tiffany touch my shit. I'm, we coming back. We'll be back. Ooh, ooh, we. We're going to park 14, guys. Guess what? George's car came out amazing in the new purple. He's running so low on money. And he can't, he can't keep the shop open. He's having a hard time keeping the shop open because he's working on other people's cars so much. But his new car got wrapped and is finished. But he doesn't have time. He, 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 guys, he's been working really fucking hard on other people's cars. So he can't pay attention to my car. And he's got other stuff to do, like wrapping his own fucking car. This is August 24th now. August 24th. This is how, bro, I'm going to keep reminding y'all, these, these texts that I've been showing y'all started in November of last year when he said my car was almost ready. He said my car was almost ready. November last year. It's August 24th and he's showing me all the new shit he's doing to his new car. So now he's coming back in the BMW. Guess what, guys? He ended up doing both tie rods. And and charge me for labor for that. Okay, you know what? If that if that was the actual problem and it wasn't just the weight, then cool. But then also the alignment was eighty dollars. And also, you know what? Your steering rack has a little play in it too. So I'll start looking for new steering rack. And angle kits are rough on them. So you know you probably been beating that car up. Didn't I tell you that I just drove my BMW for the first time in a while? So I haven't been fucking beating it up at all. Why is my shit, what, what happened in between when I said it just felt a little shaky to now all this shit? Oh, also, guess what? Your car is overheating now. Because it just is. You know, your car is overheating. I don't know what happened. Just happened. It drove fine when you were driving it while it was shaking and shit. But now that I drove it, your car is overheating. I don't know what's going on. So he sent me a text basically saying he'll come pick the car up Wednesday. I put a question mark on that once Wednesday came and he said, oh, the BMW, he started explaining. I said, no, it's Wednesday. You said you was going to come pick it up. He said, oh, that was last week when I sent that. Never heard back, so I just didn't show up. You said you were coming Wednesday. I didn't know you needed a reply. You said you were coming Wednesday. Come on. Also, the bumper fell off. How the fuck did the bumper fall off? What did it, bro? I drove the car before you took it. Nothing was wrong. I, 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 like, we were good. How'd the bumper fall off? So now he respects my place and he'll come Monday. But also, can you send me that money for the motor of the car? And now that I've broken your other car, I need more money. What the fuck? We're coming back. Jesus Christ. Look at the part 15. This is, it's long, guys. So after he asked me for the, the, the money for the engine that just hasn't been done, whatever i say man i gotta be honest george the bmw came back worse than it left when he brought it back to me my bumper was in my passenger seat 
and it was still running hot. He never fixed the cooling issue. It was still running hot. I can't drive my car. I can't drive my second car now. And you're still and you're asking for money for the first one that you haven't finished. You ain't you brought my car back worse than it left. And I haven't even seen a picture of the engine inside of Rick, much less seen it running or have seen it in person at all since you killed it. I promise I'll pay you when something is actually happens, dude. Tie rod's done, and I still can't drive the car. And now you're asking me for money for the tie rods because you did the tie rods, but now I still can't drive my car. I haven't seen Rick in years, and still giving you money for both seems insane to me. You're pumping cars out of your shop back to back, and I'm the only one sitting here waiting for years. I'm trying to help you, bro, but I got but we gotta be fair on this stuff, dude. He said, yes, I know, but I'm $6,700 deep in Rick, and I didn't account for that. That ain't my fucking fault. You shouldn't have crashed my car. Then he starts telling me what the BMW needs, how I need to send him more money for all this other stuff that I didn't ask him to do. I didn't ask you to wreck my car, bro. Now you got to do all this shit because you borrowed somebody's car and you wrecked it, and now you got to fucking suffer the consequences for that. I'm not going to sympathize with you. I know it's my fault. Just it all came so fast. That's why it was taking so long. Yeah, it fucking came fast. You wrecked my car pretty goddamn fast and I haven't seen it in years. That's fair. When the motor is complete and Rick, then I'll ask for the money. For the motor, just been trying to knock out cars and get paid back what I invested in the gun. No, you don't get that back. I invested, I invested money in it before you fucking crashed it. I'm not getting that back. You crashed my fucking car that I invested all that money into. And now you want you want your money back. What the fuck? The 2K would have helped me get ahead on money. It would have been able to dedicate time and get it done a lot faster. The body work is finally done. Just trying to get a financial break. I bought the R8, then a bunch of stuff went to shit. So it's been an, I've been in a hole bad for the past four or five months. I don't care about that because I didn't wreck your fucking R8 and you keep doing new shit to your R8. So I say with George, I didn't do all that stuff. I can't sympathize with you if you're if I see you doing new shit to your car every week. You got to prioritize this stuff, man. Your dad is worried about the shop and everything, man. His dad came to me and said, George is spending all my retirement money on the shop and we're about to go broke. So I know his dad is worried as shit about the shop. It's about to go down. Uh, he's pumping out Lambos and Ferraris and he's got time to do all that shit, but nothing on mine. We will fucking be back. We still, we stand on this. Part 16, we're going to keep this going. I say, man... Uh, you're pushing out Lambos and Ferraris every time I talk to you. So I can see how charges from a car you wrecked is coming out of nowhere. I can't, I, I don't understand that. How is this coming out of nowhere? You, you know this happened years ago. It's not coming out of nowhere. I wish I could feel bad for you. Uh, I, I wish I could feel bad for where you're at, dude. But I trusted you with my cars and I'm just putting money into something I can't even use until you figure out how to budget and get your shop shit together, pretty much. And he said, yes, I agree. Don't need you to feel sorry for me. Do you be, do you not? Because you just asked me to fucking feel sorry for you because you're running low on money after you fucked up. Just trying to explain my situation. The only reason I had to do stuff to the R8 was because we use it to advertise and it wasn't drivable at the time and Tiff wrapped it for free. Why the fuck are you advertising a non-running car? Why the fuck are you advertising for a shop that I'm sure if people have been coming by there for the last couple of years, they've been seeing the same fucking car on the lift. It ain't that I can't pay for it. It ain't that I can't pay for it. it it's, 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 you just been, what the fuck? Why would you advertise a non-running car? Just so you can say, hey, my girlfriend knows how to wrap a car if it don't move. Cool. Now he's finally sending me pictures of the bodywork being done. There's still no engine in the car. There's still no engine in the car, just bodywork. You know, it's, it's back to how it was when you gave it to me. It's September 19th, guys. September fucking 19th. Can I tow the M3 over Thursday? He still hasn't came and picked it up and fixed it from when he broke it. I want to do a head, ga head gasket test, then check for leaks in the cooling system. No shit, because you, uh, he still hasn't fixed this on September 19th, guys. Then he says, I'll see you at Le Mans. Now, I don't even want to fucking try to explain this shit, um, because this real condescending ass, this thing right here, this, 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 glad I could get y'all connected. The people from Petit Le Mans hit him up because he's been fucking telling people that that's the only way that they can contact me. But 
the people went on my fucking Instagram and found my head of operations email and they contacted my team directly after they talked to George and they figure out this motherfucker don't know what the hell he's talking about. This we we're, we're not even sure this motherfucker even knows T Pain. So they hit my people up directly and he had to let me know that hey, I'm the one that did that. No, you didn't. They had to go looking for that shit because they didn't fucking trust you because you're pretty untrustworthy motherfucker. So they hit my people directly. Didn't need you to do that for me at all. I'm me. Why the fuck would I need you to hook me up on some race event shit? I'm me. What the fuck? And also, if you're the one that hooked it up, why the fuck you don't know what day I'm going? Why, why, why don't you know that? Why don't you know what day I'm going if you hooked it up? 17. So, uh, fuck. So after I explained to him that I didn't, you know, that they hit my people, they didn't, they hit my people. He said, oh, they wanted to make sure it was legit and <laughs> that, that you were coming and being such a big company. They didn't want to rely on me texting you, of course, because you didn't let me talk to them, but you kept promising them that you were going to get me to do shit. Don't, 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 don't use my name to try to get your ticket. You trying to act like you the one that set it up. You're trying to use my name to get in some shit. And that's just, uh, fuck it, man. So now it's September 24th. The engine bay will be done Tuesday. More is finally going in Wednesday. The engine bay is going to be done Tuesday. And the engine is going in Wednesday. I'm sure you guys know where this is going. I saw him on October 1st at Petit Le Mans. He was sitting outside, couldn't get into the VIP part that they let me into because he didn't set the shit up. He's sitting outside just chilling. I'm up in the, I'm up in the AC in the, in the VIP shit, eating Michelin star shit, and he wasn't invited because it's just that you didn't set it up. After that, after the event, after Petit Le Mans, shout out to uh, Motul and, 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 Mich and Michelin and you know, thank y'all, man. Thank y'all for taking such good care of me, man. Y'all y'all are fucking saints. So at the event, I get hyped up from seeing all the racing and endurance race and stuff like that. And and George asked me, do I want to go drifting? You know, because the BMW is fixed now. And here we go. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to try to, we're going to try to figure this out, man. Cause I'm not, I'm not an evil person. I'm trying to see the good in people. You know what I'm saying? We go to the, we go to the track. He brings the BMW in his thing, so it, it's all fixed now. It's ready to go. He's making sure that you know finishing touches are done. Cool. Come on, let's do it. He did another alignment last minute, so you know he's gonna take a little bit. All right, cool. All right, get there, bro. Let's do it. The track day didn't go well. The car was still overheating. He didn't fix it. He didn't fix it at all. <laughs> he didn't fix it at all. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about all the problems we had today. It was issues that were unforeseen until we were in the situation. But you said you fixed it because the problems that we were having were the same problems that we were having when you had the car. <laughs> it was unforeseen, unforeseen situation that already happened. <laughs> oh my god! And now I have a Ferrari. And the fucking door won't open from the outside. And who do I trust again for this? Come back for this. Welcome to 18. So again, my Ferrari door is not opening from the outside. I've seen him work on countless Ferraris. I've seen him work on all kinds of shit, all exotic cars. So boom, he go fix this one quick thing. It's quick. And I've set up an appointment at the Ferrari dealership, but they say they can't see me until the 14th. So I'm like, if you can find it, and do that quick absolutely and i know you can do those quick because you've been doing them super fucking fast i've been seeing you pump ferraris out of your fucking out of your fucking shop back to back so just do this one quick thing for me bro i don't know why i trusted him i'm stupid as shit i'm dumb i'm dumb as hell so he says bam i can grab a sunday and we can take the door panel off monday fantastic i'll be gone but i come back the next day i'm i'm private jet in and out somewhere i'll be back the next day i need it you know i would like to drive it if i could get it back please october 10th comes around so how's it going is it gonna come back better this motherfucker said i forgot we're closed today it's your shop you can open whenever the fuck you feel like it's yours it, it's not somewhere you work when can i realist realistically expect it back dude wednesday of course, right when I leave again. Oh, I, I can bring it back tomorrow night. I, what? I'll look at it and bring it back tomorrow night. Wait, so would it be fixed? 
Wednesday or no? Depending on what's wrong. If I have to order it or no. If it's a quick fix. I'm like, dude, my appointment is fucking Friday. You haven't even looked at it? You haven't even looked at it. It's been it's been days. You haven't even checked it out to see what's wrong. My shit is Friday. Just bring it back, man. Bring it back and I'll and I'll I'll give somebody else this fucking business because obviously you don't fucking want the business. Oh no, no, no. I can pull the door panel off and I can I can just look at it tomorrow. If so, man, then go ahead and do that. But if not, bring me my fucking car back and I'll just take it to the fucking Ferrari dealership where I know it's gonna get done. Now, after this, I get phone calls from uh, some shop owners saying that, hey, does George have your Ferrari? This is this is two people, two separate people that don't know each other has called me and said, yo, does George have your Ferrari? I say yes to both of them. They both say something to the effect of George is fucking dogging that car out. He's killing your fucking car, bro. That Ferrari might as well be on two fucking wheels out there. One motherfucker said he was making smoke with the tires. I don't even I don't even know how to do that in the fucking Ferrari. I didn't know you could do that shit, but bro, they said he's redlining my shit uh, at red lights, just revving the engine up crazy, like really dogging out my fucking brand new fucking Ferrari that I just got. I haven't even had the shit for a full week yet, and people are telling me he's killing my shit. So that's a piece that wasn't important, but that's a part of why this whole shit is bad as it is so come back come back for the next part we're at 19 i didn't i honestly thought this was gonna be done in like 20 stories but it's not i got i can't lie to you so the next day he hits me and says hey found the cooling system for the bmw guess what it's fucking five thousand dollars but also guess what your fucking oil cooler is bad, too. I noticed the oil temperature was a little dumb hot at the track. You know what I'm saying? So I found that for you, too, if you want to pay, you know, you want to put some more money into the thing that I broke. So, hey, remember I said you needed new tires, then I put new tires on it without you asking me to put new tires on it. Then, you know, that was also $800. And then, you know, the part and the labor for the Ferrari, since I did that real quick. Oh, yeah, he fixed the Ferrari very fast after I said I was going to take it to Ferrari. Then he just fixed it. All of, all of a sudden, it was just fixed. Uh, so that, you know, all that. So, yeah, $6,000 in total. Just the exact amount that I said that I have into Pickle Rick. $6,000. Just right at the exact amount that I said I, I put into Pickle Rick. Uh, I'm going to need that six. I'm going to need that $6,000 from you. It's just a coincidence that all this is $6,000. And he said that he needed $6,000 back out of Rick because he put $6,000 into Rick. Come on, man. So now it's October, it's October like 13th or 12th or something like that. Is there anything else you need for the wire transfer? Because now I'm like, I'll pay you right now for what's done. So it's like a thousand dollars for what's done right now. But you're saying you're going to have to do all this extra shit. And I'll wire, I'll wire you that once, you know, you said you're going to actually work on this shit. Just trying to gauge when we can start your car. I'd like to get the BMW done and maybe have the drift. Have have you drift next Friday if you're interested. How long is the cooling system going to take to get to you? Five, six days. Bam. We should have it by Wednesday or Thursday. How much longer do you have on Pickle Rick? It's getting the motor in tomorrow, Charlie says. This is weeks after you said Wednesday. Weeks after you said it was going in Wednesday. This is weeks this is months. This is years after you initially said I was getting my car back. Now, the motor is going in tomorrow. This is October 13th. Here we go, guys. How about this? Let's get Rick done first. And I'll, and I'll get that paid for and get it out of your hair. Then I'll send the wire for the cooling system and shit like that. Since you said the motor's going to be done tomorrow and everything's going to be done after that, cool. Let's get that done and out the way. Okay, so do Rick first and then leave the BMW on hold? Yeah, if it's going to be days like you said, then, you know, let's just, let's just do that. But if it's actually going to be longer, please let me know. Guess what? I, I, don't, I don't have to let y'all predict these things. Uh, just come back for the next one. Jesus. 20. What the hell, man? So I say, look, if it's going to take days like you said, then fuck, let's go ahead and finish Rick. I'm good. But if it's going to take longer than that, you got to let me know. Guess what? Never mind. He said it won't be done. <laughs> he said it won't be done. <laughs> so, you know, if you can get the money in my account today, 
Uh, you know, I'll order everything and we'll have it by Monday. Then I uh, would love to knock out the BMW real quick because now that's all of a sudden easier than Pickle Rick because it, it flipped after you said that you wanted to do it the other way. So it's, it's uh, yeah, and, and also no telling how long Tiffany's going to take on wrapping it. You know, you, you don't want to wait on that. So just go ahead and pay me now and we can we can get this knocked out for you, man. Just give me, just give me money. This is just... This is how I can do it. Okay, George, realistically on both. Real times, George. Come on, man. Just tell me. Just for real, dude. I know you're busy, brother. I know you have exotics and super VIP customers that you got to get, but I'm realistically trying to start a business with these cars. And every time I tell my team I'm about to have my cars back and we can get started, I have to push everything back again because you tell me it's gonna take longer. Imagine the space you're gonna have if you just get my cars done, bro. I promise you I won't bug you and you won't, uh, wait, I promise you I won't bug you and you can get these exotics back to back if my old ass cars weren't in there. I just need to know realistically when I'm gonna have things be back in my shit, please. I'm paying for promo spots on different platforms that I can't get a refund for. I'm trying to get the cars featured in certain outlets that are doing huge things and I keep telling them I'll be ready with the cars and I'm missing huge opportunities. I honestly just need to know a real timeline. I'm not even asking for it to rush it or anything. I just need to know when you're going to do it for real. That's it. You do this, man. This is your thing. I know you can knock this out. If you tell me a real time, then I'll get you all the money you need. But I gotta be honest, man. I just don't trust your word enough to keep sending you money, which is why I pay you for things that are finished with no problem. Just be real with me, dog, and keep your word, and you can have all this money you're asking for. She said the 30th. What? She? Okay. It will be done. She said the 30th and it'll be done. Guys, it's two weeks before the 30th. I know this because when, when we got off the phone, I was like, okay, two more weeks then. So I'm like, bro, that's a long fucking time to wrap a car because he's saying that's really all that's left. I could have took it to other people that wrapped, that wrapped it the first time in the regular Pickle Rick shit. No, the date is them combined. He's going to finish the engine and the car is going to be completely done on the 30th. I said, see, man, are you actually going to work on it to get it to me that day? Yes, on the 30th. Now, let's come back to this one. 21, I think. I, I think it's 21. I'm not sure. So, I'm like, bro, are you actually going to work on it to get it done that day? He says, yes. That's why I'm giving myself cushion for errors and delays, which means he thinks he's going to get it done quicker than that. And he's just giving himself some cushion just in case something goes wrong. But in this time frame, I've sent multiple cars out to different shops to do shit. I sent my RTR well, I sent my Mustang, my normal Mustang to RTR and it came back finished in a month. I sent my Joker Impala to go get an LS swap. The same thing he's doing to the, to the Pickle Rick and it came back in a month. I sent it on September 1st, came back on motherfucking the 30th. Like what, like what's take, what's been taking these years and years and years and years. Everything that was wrong with Pickle Rick was the same wrong with the, with the, with the Joker car and it came back. What's been taking so long, bro? Now, just plain and simple, it wasn't a priority. And that's my bad. For a while, didn't know what direction to go with fixing it. Your car was going 46 weeks, all this other shit. So, excuses, excuses, excuses. If that date works for you, we can get it done. What about the BMW? We want to knock that out, too. I'm like, are you, though, though? You know what I mean? Or is it just going to fall to the side, too? You got to understand how I'm feeling, bro. I understand how you're feeling. I've just been so overwhelmed. Not an excuse. I've been doing so much work and I've been overwhelmed. You've been doing a lot of work getting other people's car out of the fucking shop. You've been working on everybody else's car. I don't care about that. Everybody thinks I'm balling, but the R8 is finance. Don't, I don't give a fuck about your image and shit like that in the car world. That's not what I'm asking you about. Where's my fucking car, bro? I may be the most overwhelmed person you know, but if I stall on somebody's shit and I don't give them things back in a timely manner, I fuck up careers and companies. I get asked about the 240 daily and I keep lying to people about where it is. I give you grace by not telling people what's really happening because if I did, it would fuck up your business. But I still have to fuck up my business to keep yours going. And it's killing me because I feel like I'm a good friend and I'm not getting the same effort back. There are so many people that want to work on my cars and I stick with you because that's the kind of person I am, dude. I told you I wanted you to do this and I protect your name and I'm still somehow the one that gets put up on the shelf and you still want me to send you more money for that. That's crazy from my side, dude. I feel like I'm being taken for a ride. 
Not at all. I had to borrow money to make payroll this week. So if I went full time on Rick, I wouldn't be able to pay payroll for the following week. Now, this is important because he says he doesn't have enough capital to make money through the week and he, he wants to pay his people, which is honorable. So I would say I understand that dude, but that there's nothing I'd be able to say if it was the other way around. What if I had my cars and I took this long to pay you? If I told you I didn't have the money, but you saw me in the strip club throwing up the shit and everything, you started seeing me just spending money everywhere else. Because obviously he'd be on my ass about that shit. So come back for 22. God damn it. R22, shit. So basically he's saying, uh, you know, he needs to work on those other cars so he can pay his payroll. And then, you know, he wants to pay his people. I get that. So I said, if it was the other way around and you gave me back my cars and I took this long to pay you, you wouldn't give a fuck about me saying, oh, I haven't made money in so long or whatever. You you would want your fucking money, right? But you see me, you know, buying shit and paying for cars and, you know, going in strip club and just throwing money on random girls. You'd be like, bro, where you got money. Where's my money? Just the same way I'm seeing you buying cars, wrapping cars, putting Ferraris out. And you saying I got to pick up this Ferrari because this dude wants me to work on this shit now. You bragging to me about how much money you making and then tell me you ain't got no money. So fuck it. When will I have the BMW back if I send you this money today? It'll be ready Friday of next week. Cool. Friday of next week. This has all happened. All this text has happened on October 12th. October 12th. The BMW should be ready Friday of next week. So now he's telling me about this new guy he's got. His name is Smith. Smith is a fucking gangster. I love Smith. Smith is the motherfucking homie. And he's one of my homeboy's sons. It's Smith is good. Smith is in there. So he's got a new guy. So now we're getting caught up because this guy is better than all the people we've had before him. But also, if you want the shaking to stop in the BFW, we're going to need that steering rack, man. You got to get it. I honestly don't give a fuck about anything else. I, I didn't know Smith at the time. Uh, I think I did. Yes, I did. I knew Smith, but I, I wasn't concentrating on it. So I'm like, are you 100% sure that's the steering rack doing the shaking? Because it just didn't feel like that when I had it. It didn't feel like it was a steering rack issue. Can't give you 100%, but I know it has a little play inside of the rack. Cool. All right, you know what? How much is the steering rack, man? Oh, I got to call and see. Oh, my God, your head is rusty. Do you want me to get these? Why are you trying to add on more shit? Why are you adding on more shit? Guess what, guys? Steering rack is on back order. Can't get it. But also, the steering rack is $600, and the labor is going to be $360. And then the alignment, a, a new alignment, apart from the one that I said I just did before we went on the track, that's $120. i will go ahead and take care of the alignment, too, if you want. You know, I'll do that again after you fucking, what the fuck, man? Remember, he said he couldn't make payroll. This is what I came with. So how much and how long for everything? Both cars. Give me a final price and real dates for everything. Completely done with wrap and everything. And I'll send the, all the money for the entire job if that's going to keep the shop going and make uh, and make payroll. But I want to be priority and I want my shit. Both cars fixed, fully functional, and able to go cross country if I fucking need to. Fuck. If you promise my two cars are the next two cars to leave out of your shop, I'll pay the fucking payroll. On top of it. On top of that. I'll pay it. Come back. R23. So he's saying that he can't make payroll. And it's just been hard, man. So he's needed to work on other cars so he can make payroll. So I say, if you promise my cars are the next two cars that leave out of that shop before any other vehicles within the next two weeks fully running aligned balanced and functional i'll fucking pay next month's payroll for everybody just to help but i want my shit running like new bro i'm serious now he said the reason he can't work on my cars is because he can't make any money off my cars until they finish so how about this don't worry about payroll. I'll pay payroll on top of what I owe you for fixing the cars. If I can just get my cars back, bro. He says, I can't promise they'll be running like new because your BMW has a lot. He's basically saying your cars are old, so they won't be running like new. Uh, I, I say, you know what I mean, man? Not, I know it's not new, but I mean, run it like it, running like it was at least when I gave it to you. When, it, when you had it before the fucking TV show. Like I said, I'll pay for the whole shit up front if you just get my cars out of there but that's only if i'm priority and i get my cars back quick guess what the fuck he sent me after that another car he's working on why the fuck would you why 
You think I'm in the fucking mood to see what you're working on right now? That that's not my car. That's not my car. That's not my BMW in his trailer. He's just sending me because, oh man, this is a cool looking BMW that I'm about to work on. Did you want to see it? No, I don't want to fucking see somebody else's car getting worked on. Had to go pick this up. So boom, he put it all together. $11,000 for everything. Pickle rig done and turned in by the 30th. BMW will be done next week. So everything will be done by the 30th. This is October 12th still that we're talking. October 12th, $11,000. Everything will be done by the 30th. I want it to be clear as possible. I said, just to confirm, if I send you the entire payment of that much tomorrow morning, the BMW will be fixed, running good, and delivered by the 21st or the 23rd of October. And the 240 will have a new engine running, functioning, functioning correctly, wrapped, completed, and delivered by the 30th of October. I want it to be so clear. I will physically move two current jobs out to do both cars for you. Okay. Just wanted to be clear. He said, yes, sir, to my text. Okay, cool. Sending me pictures of him working on it. Engine still not in the car, though. Boom, finally on the 14th. Smith put the fucking engine in the car. Smith, the fucking rock star I told you about. When we were at the track, Smith said he was going to put the engine in the car, and he kept his fucking word because he knew how long shit was taking, and he felt bad for me. Come back for the next part. R24? Okay. October 18th comes around. He said, the car runs. Do you want to hear it today? I wanted to do an Instagram live <laughs> for the first start. Bro, now you trying to, you acting like you did a good job now. Now you want people to see, oh, look at this good job I did. I put this engine in after two fucking years of fucking this man around. Like, come on, bro. Like, you, you haven't, you know, come on, man. This is crazy to me. Now I got to buy a new harness, blah, blah, blah. They're offering a sponsor deal. Like, I don't want anybody to sponsor me, bro. I'll get sponsors myself. I'm me. I don't need to go through you to get sponsors. I'm good. Just fucking just fix my car, bro. And he's still asking for more money. I sent him the money already, by the way. I sent him the money that next morning. I sent him the $11,000 and he still wants me to fucking cash app him for this shit. Come on, dude. He sent me a video of the car cranking and running and, and, a, and a dyno and all that shit. And I, I, I thank you. Oh my God. Do you want to leave the bumper off? Did I, did I send it to you with no bumper? Bring it back with the bumper and the diffuser at the same time. He's got the nerve to ask me, can I come by and do the reveal on Sunday for his YouTube channel? I can't, I can't explain to you how fucking mad I was at that shit. The fucking reveal? You know how long I've been fucking waiting, bro? It's been years. And you want me to, you think I'm going to be excited for your fucking YouTube channel? You think I'm going to be like, oh, what a surprise. I didn't know my car was getting done for two years. Come on, man. He goes on about his YouTube because it's so important now that, that I make I make sure people know he's doing my car. And, you know, are you okay with being in it? He, he filmed us talking on FaceTime. So I said, I definitely want to wait until I make my own video for my own fucking car. Like, I'm doing, I'm doing my own video. You don't get to reveal my shit. After all the shit you done took me through, you don't get to be the person to reveal my fucking car. This is important. He's have to read. He has to redo the exhaust, and he flies out Monday so he can go to SEMA. He's going to SEMA, and my cars ain't done. My cars aren't done, and he has to leave to go to SEMA. Now he said everything was going to be done on the thirtieth. He's got to leave before that. To what? I really wanted to film your first reaction to the car. And I'm like, bro, the body will be assembled today and hopefully Tiff can wrap the rest tomorrow. But we both leave for Vegas on Monday to go to SEMA to promote his business that this is happening at. Also, I put the face bomb because he said Tiffany was already done with the rap. And now she's doubting herself and she wants to, oh my God, man. It's, it's getting close. It's getting real fucking close. So come back for the next part. Jesus. Or 25. So close. Now, everything's supposed to be done on October the 30th. They sent me these pictures on October 29th to tell me how fire the color is. This is supposed to be this big reveal of my car being done by October 30th. 
And on October 29th, that's as far as they got. He told me that she, um, you know, she's just, she's, she's feeling nervous. She doesn't want to disappoint me. And she's been redoing a lot of stuff and taking it off and putting it back on and taking it off. And I say, bro, your business can't run off of feelings, my dude. It's killing my business. I understand doing a good job, but if that's what's holding it up, then I need it to take it to the people that actually did it professionally the first time. Oh my God. And they had the confidence to do this from the jump. I'm dropping the ball on a ton of deals because I literally don't have any of my cars. I don't have any of my drift cars, bro. I got three drift cars and none of them are here with me. Now I got to push things back again. We're shooting for Monday still. That's when you leave to go to SEMA. And I said, if those picks are from right now, there's no way they'll be finished by Monday. He said they're shooting for Monday, but it's the 29th. Tomorrow ain't Monday. And you said that tomorrow everything is going to be done. He says, no faith. I'll come grab the wheels tomorrow. I said, George, please do not go to SEMA without bringing me my cars. Guess what he did? He went to fucking SEMA and had Smith and Holden bringing me my cars. And he didn't even want to be there when they brought me my cars. Smith was driving the fucking BMW and Holden was bringing the 240 on a trailer. He went to fucking SEMA and just said, fuck my cars. This is Sunday. And he said, we're delivering both cars tomorrow evening. Sunday was the 30th, by the way. I, I, I think so. Yeah, Sunday was the 30th. So the whole thing about me paying the payroll is out the door. It's out the door now. You said tomorrow and I, you said the third, you said you was giving yourself cushion and everything. So now it's the 30th and now I got to wait tomorrow. Got to push it back again. This is also still the 30th. The car ain't even finished being wrapped yet. That whole panel, this whole panel ain't even done. Look at that. On the, look at that. I forgot to mention that the day before this, Tiffany called me and said they ran out of wrap. And it's and they can't, she can't finish wrapping the car and they need to order some more. So it's going to take even longer. And there's the link to order the wrap for me to pay for it. Oh, also it's out of stock. So, you know. Part 26. I can't believe y'all sticking in here for this. This is crazy. I'm glad y'all are here, but God damn, thanks, you know? So now I'm talking to Tiffany. Tiffany is apparently just doing her best, and I need to hold on and give her some confidence. Um, she says, you know what? I think I got enough pieces just sitting on the floor in here to where I can piece it together and, you know, make it lie. I said, it, look, if it's not super noticeable, then go ahead. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of a world where lines in the middle of a whole rear quarter panel is not going to be noticeable, but hey, go off, queen. Then Tiffany says, herself, she, no, she feels bad now. She said, also, side note, your car would have been done weeks ago if it was movable and off the lift. I'm sorry you've had to wait this long. She knows that George is treating me like I just don't exist. Like I'm just some piece of shit customer or something that he doesn't give a fuck about. And honestly, I don't think he did, but that's just what it was, you know? And But she knew everybody in the shop felt that shit. That's why Smith uh, spearheaded the fucking, the, the engine because it was like, dude, I don't, he's not, he's just not working on your shit. Like we have time. Like we, we could, we could do it. I'm going to put the motor in. That's why he did it. And Tiffany's like, dude, your car could have been done forever ago. I'm sorry. She's apologizing for this grown man. Now this is all Sunday. She's saying she got the bumper done. I'm looking at the boss kit. I'm like, this is fucking, I'm starting to get more happy. This is pretty cool. Holy shit, she got the back quarter panels done. I, I, fuck. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm with it. Let's go. It's the fucking, all right. It's the moment of truth. Let's do this. Let You know what? Okay, tell them to bring the cars. This is now the 31st. She sent me these pictures on the 31st. And my cars are supposed to come to me that night here we go kaboom the night of the 31st happens smith and halden show up with both my cars uh they look super fucking disappointed they are they they get out the cars and they look at me like we 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 just want to pre-apologize for what you're about to see and we are so sorry we didn't do this, man. George is at SEMA. We didn't know. 
everything that was going on. Smith has only been there for like three or four months and he's just now seeing all this shit that's been happening to me for the last couple of years. And he's like, oh man, I could have did that shit super fast. And I appreciate you, Smith. Thank you, man. And, and thank you, Alden. Uh, but it's time for the reveal, guys. <sighs> last, last part, last part. Here's the reveal. Let's do this shit. My life All right, be guys, like, here we go. Let's fucking do this. Uh, yeah. My life be like. This fontaine, spinning and monsoon and grinning is how I obtain This blows of how I came, rolling down the hills cause life's a hassle It's circled by my folly like a moat around the castle Stay afloat, catch a second wind That wasn't like that. What the fuck? Where are my cushions? George is too tall, so he took my cushions out, and I have no idea where they are. But also, you want that happening on the drift track? You want this happening on your drift track, buddy? Where's that? Fantastic. Oh, also, we couldn't figure out how to put your glove box back in, so it's back there. Yeah, have fun with that. You, yeah, that's fully completed and all that shit. Yeah, you love it. My shit was definitely not dirty like this when I gave it to him. He's had it for so long, it's gotten water damaged. Water has gotten in here, all kind of shit. That's not just from people sitting on it. My shit was not like this when I gave it to him. It's fucking crazy, bro. A lot of time wrapping that just to have everything red still. Looks good from far away, but would you have paid $11,000 for everything I showed you up close? Huh? Would you? Would you have? Would you have? All that faded out seat shit, would you have paid $11,000 to make sure this shit gets done and then to have your seat not even be bolted down? Would you have done that? Would you have done that? Now he's got my money. He's going to see him and promoted his business and I'm fucked. Damn. Look, I totally understand. And I know a lot of people are going to be on here like, yo, it's a fucking drift car, bro. What do you want? Uh, drift cars aren't supposed to be. I get that. I totally understand. I know I'm going to slam this thing into a wall one day and it's going to be fucking crazy. Drift cars are supposed to get fucked up. I wanted to be the one to fuck up my car. And all the shit that I'm complaining is wrong right now. It wasn't like that when I gave it to him. When I when it was in my care, it was fucking, it was exactly how I wanted it. All the shit was working right, everything was good. But when it came back, and when it came back, it didn't come back the way I gave it to him. At least do that. And I paid $11,000 to make sure that it at least did. That's what I'm saying. I'm not worried about that, that car itself getting fucked up. I know this car is going to be fucked up. But if I give you $11,000 up front before anything is done, then I kind of expect my car to come back in a fucking, in at least a good fashion, or at least how I gave it to you. That's it, so I'm, I'm not, this is not to fucking do anything malicious. I don't give a fuck about this shit because I'm not fucking with them no more at all. I'm just saying, this is the story of Pickle Rick that everybody's been asking me and asking why, oh, you're not into drifting anymore? And I've just been chilling. I haven't been saying any of this shit, and I wouldn't have said anything 
and I still would I would have let the shit go. I made all those videos before, and then I let it go because it was just too much time. But when I got that text from Hurt Life saying that he's still out here trying to get sponsorships off of my name, I need motherfuckers to understand this shit was not my fault. Because when I show up to a fucking to a drift event with this whole shit different, now. I don't want to be seen as the asshole and George is going to go around telling people that I'm just a dick and you know how celebrities are and you know celebrities, you know, you know, they get real fickle about their shit and they don't want to spend any money and you know, they're just rich assholes that just want to drift and you know, I'm sure he's going to do all that shit. I'm sure he's going to do all that shit before I even get to posting this part of the video. So it doesn't matter to me. I don't give a fuck about that. Look, all I give a fuck about is that everybody know that when this shit comes out that I fucking, I did everything I could. I was nice as fuck. I gave him so many goddamn chances. I was so fucking nice. I did everything I could. And that's why now I got all my own shit. I don't need nobody to fucking uh, hold my hand going to the drift track. I got my own shit. I got my own trailer. And I was counting on George for all that shit before. But now I got all my own shit. I pulled my car out of the trailer. I put it in the trailer because I didn't want to look at it because it pissed me off every time I saw it. And I wasn't going to make them videos until Hurt sent me that motherfucking text. But I got my own shit and ain't nobody going to have to hold my fucking hand. I'll see y'all at the goddamn track. And trust me, this fucking rap ain't going to be on there when y'all see me. It's going to be a whole different fucking car. I appreciate y'all. He can't keep getting away with it! I didn't have time to iron my shirt and get my fucking face together for this because I just saw the craziest fucking shit of all time. George did an apology video. Up, out, it was so sincere. God damn it. I didn't have time. George did an apology video saying uh, some stuff. It was real sincere. He's saying he, he's been a technician for his whole life. He, he's real bad at management. Uh, he didn't have real good management. A lot of stuff happened while he was building the car, basically saving his shop. He's got to save his shop. I understand that. Save your shop, George. Fight for that motherfucker because you built that for a long time. Your dad built it for a while. Save that shop, bro. But if I'm being honest, I got to tell you, man, you got to stop trusting the people that you think are your friends, George. You know why? It has the juice. Your friends have been sending me your text messages and messages on, on, on all the shit uh, while you're doing that. Now, I've been trying to figure out how to make this thing fit and I can't fit the top on it. But at the top, the dude says T-Pain's been uh, flaming you online. And George at the top, right, right up in here, he says, LOL, he's a bitch. <laughs> Then he tried to call the dude he couldn't answer. And uh, yeah, dude said, uh, what's going on? He said, I'm mad. He said, you going straight to that? He said, he's bending it so far. The dude said that rap did look rough though, George. Just saying, that car sat in my shop for a year. I'm in no rush to get it done. You know what I'm saying? He's, 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 he said that I was saying I'm in no rush to get it done while I'm showing text messages asking him when I can get my car. Yeah. Then the dude said they invited him to the getaway show too. And once they told him they can smash his car, he said no. And George said, yeah, he's been mad about that too. Stop trusting your friends. Stop texting people you don't know if they on your side or not. T-Pain spilling the beans to his age to perfection. I kept my mouth shut about GMG since I got into the sport. Didn't want to come out being negative before developing a good reputation. I'm not, I'm not one to trash good re I'm not one to trash companies, but damn. Go watch all T-Pain's videos. It's a familiar sight if you know George at all. Don't get screwed over by GMG. I'm not the only one. Hey man, I saw the Pickle Rick rap. A girl I know owns the company Torque Auto, Torque, Torque Auto Mark in Athens and says she's fixed several of Tiffany's raps and said they would redo the rap for you in the house. I'm not the only one. George used to take Pickle Rick out at OG GMG location on Flowery Branch and drifted in front of crowds of people for clout. He used the fact that he knew T-Pain. Come on, man. Come on, man. My fiance and I own Excel Motor Works right across the street and we knew something like this was coming for years. Glad someone out here, you can't say this was just my shit and I was being weird. Nah, I'm doing another one. Let's do another part. Look, I'm not one to, look, if, I get it. My thing is, you're making this apology while you call him, you're out here calling me a bitch and you're telling people on your Facebook that I'm a scam artist. Get to, you know what, let me go find this fucking picture. This is on your Facebook. You posted this, and, and they, they posted your fucking car, and they said, give T-Pain 
his money back. And you said he still owes us money. That's why it didn't get finished. He's a scam artist. But you're on your fucking platform on your Instagram saying it was your fault and my bad. Uh, we didn't pay attention to it. Uh, uh, it. It wasn't a priority. But you're telling people that I'm a scam artist. You're trying to you're trying to do the political thing and play, you know, play like, oh, I'm so sorry. It was just it was our fault. And I get it. But you but you telling a different story when you say when you telling your friends that I'm a bitch and I'm crying about my cars. Uh, he's been crying about that a lot. He's been crying about that. Crying about you crashing my car and making me pay for it? Yeah, I'm fucking crying about that because I thought this shit was gonna be better than this. And then you tell people that I'm a scam artist. I'm the world's worst fucking scam artist if I'm the one paying you $11,000 to get an unfinished car. $11,000 after all, oh, and, and trust and believe, if please post any motherfucking invoice that you have for me and I'll post the corresponding fucking payment that I sent out. I got the wire information. I just went, I screenshot it all last night. I stayed up so fucking long for this. I couldn't wait. This is motherfucking addicts from goddamn from from drift hq you were absolutely right george is publicly calling you a scam artist on facebook everybody that that has ever met you knows you're a real one and a hell of a nice dude i'm excited to see you got back in the driving come on man i watched all of your story time and that's ridiculous i didn't want to reply in the videos because i'm sure very soon word circulate and didn't want to even get even more stuff started so on the side so i used to be the lead fabricator for classic livery of atlanta who is tied in with george and that whole circle of people they are all crooked as fuck and this happens to more than just you i quit my dream job and didn't touch cars for a couple years after because it just took the passion out of it for me i'm not the only one i'm trying to play the victim on this man oh yeah also smith doesn't work there anymore because he quit he quit after he after he saw how fucking george did me after just being there for a few months smith quit so Good on you, Smith. I got recommendations of anywhere you want to work at, bro. I got you. Also, somebody random hit my fucking phone last night and said, hey, it's random, but I'm friends with Tiffany on Facebook, and she just posted your number along with all this. And in that post, she says, I got T-Pain's phone number if anybody wants it. Since he wants to make it public, let's go. And then when you scroll down, you can see that she posted my fucking phone number. You did something super fucking illegal. You got petty and you got stupid. And now I got all the screenshots. Oh, I did everything before you deleted the post, Tiff. Come on now, let's get smart about this before you start making apology videos. That shit don't work like that. I got everything. Yeah. There it is. Found a way to do it. Damn, bro, T-Pain blasting you out there. LOL, he's a bitch. That's from George. George is calling me a bitch. And he's making an apology video trying to make y'all feel sorry for him and feel sorry for his shop. But this was last night. This was last night at 1130. This was last night and he woke up today. Oh, I'm so sorry. Fuck you, George. I just want to do a little reading for y'all real quick. Uh, hey, I just wanted to say that I've been quiet about it, but I got absolutely screwed over as well by the same people. That's why I kept my distance. And, uh, and disappeared from that shop. It was a long time coming. There's a ton of others as well in the car scene of Atlanta that have horror stories. I couldn't believe what happened to you with the TV show in Pickle Rick, unfreaking believable. You wanna know who this is? You wanna know who this is saying this shit? That dude in blue, one of the biggest motherfucking car guys I goddamn know. Come on, man, you fuck over that dude in blue? And he did that one fucking YouTube with me and Pickle Rick, and he saw how Pickle Rick was running. He knew, he tested it himself. He did a vlog about it. I'm proud of your driving progress at Lanier and was good seeing you out there again a few weeks ago. I'm so sorry about all the shit you went through as well. The story time was worth it. Behind the scenes, Hurt and others knew of his reputation and warned me a thousand times. This is David, that dude in blue. Come on, bro. Now you're trying to make an apology video like, oh, no, this was an isolated event. Oh, this has never happened. I've never sent anybody shit out there. Everybody's saying you do this. Stop lying, bro. Stop fucking lying. I got people fucking everywhere, bro. I got people everywhere. This is my other homeboy, dude, when we went to his shop after dropping off the helmet to you, he was name dropping like hell. You big name drift guys, and he knew a buddy of mine that drifts, and he was talking shit about him. Then turned around and was hitting on my wife as we was leaving. Come on, man, stop fucking lying about the shit you do, bro. He hit me up about a month ago wanting me to do a helmet to match the purple on his R8 and basically asking me to do it for hella cheap since it would, uh, since it would be, his words, be a single color and should only take a day or two. Now you telling somebody how long some shit should take? Now you know how long, now you know how quick something can happen? Please tell more people how I owe you money because from what I see, I paid more than what the invoice was.
actually overpaid you. But I'm a scam artist. Come on, man. Let's let's be real about this shit. Please tell people. 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 Please tell as many people as you can. Please tell people. Please tell people. Please don't let people get scammed by me. Please don't let anybody get scammed by me. Oh, and since y'all want to do the dance, remember that time we was doing reinforcement on the E46 in your shop, and then Tiffany walked in and said, y'all niggas hiring? And I didn't say nothing, and you still let her wrap my car, and I ain't say nothing about that? Yeah, nigga, y'all hiring now, nigga.